Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to What's Up EC. My name is Noah Arnold. I'm Mitch Robinson. And here today for episode three, we're going to be talking to some representatives from student council, see what's going on behind the scenes. Let's hop right in. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm starting out here with Miss Donahue. Miss Donahue, how are you? I'm very well. How are you, Noah? I'm phenomenal. Thank you very wonderful. much. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, so first question I wanted to ask you, I wanted to talk a little bit about what you guys do around the school, what would you say is your favorite thing that you guys do here at EC? I would say it's probably homecoming. Okay. Yes, because we get to bring that spirit in, that, that school spirit, and that's what we've been working on and what we work on every year is to just get more school spirit, more um, student interaction into what's going on with the activities at uh, school. Absolutely. Now I know you guys also, for the first time, did a second homecoming this year. How was that? Did you guys have fun with that? Yes, we were a little worried about it. It came up very quickly mm -hmm. after the dance and right when we got back from break. But um, I think all in all, it went really well. We had a big turnout for the, um, the, the game, which we wanted to do for the girls because they work very hard. Absolutely. Um, and it seems like the, it, it keeps going because now the students, it seems like the student section keeps going after it. So I think we may have started, not only us, but it was a good start to that. Most definitely. Also, um, it just gets some more people to kind of shine out there for homecoming court and um, now the dance there wasn't as many people there but the those that did come said they had the best time that they've ever had at a dance so to me the whole everything about it even the pep rally we heard some good things about that as well and absolutely. I just think it was it was a success it was it starts small you got to start small and build up from there absolutely I know I definitely had a fun time I was good. really surprised and actually excited that you guys put together a second one mm -hmm. you know it being senior year I just thought it was a cool process well, good good so now I want to shift towards a little bit tell me a little bit about what you guys do outside of this school I know you do some cool activities just go ahead and tell me about that yeah we are members of the IASC which is the Indiana so Association of Student Councils. Mm -hmm. um, actually, we have uh, two students or two of our execs here that are our members of that council. Um, and we go to state convention, and that's where all the different schools from Indiana come together and they talk about leadership ideas. They also do SLI, which is a workshop in the summertime that they go to to um, work on leadership skills as well. Um, what else do we do? We also work with the um, Special Olympics and it's th through Northern Kentucky and we go there and they have a little banquet and dance and we put the dance on for them Just decorate and spend time with them and they really Absolutely. like that a lot. So it's good stuff. And we also do read across America mm -hmm. and um, What else do we do? Oh, we also do um, For the trunk or treat that they do at North Dearborn Elementary We take one of the minibuses and make like a little haunted minibus for the kids and they really, really like that. Yeah that's super yep. cool. All yep. right, well, that's actually all I have for you right now. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. All right. We're here with Mary Berkey, and I'm just going to ask her a couple questions. What influenced you to join student council? Uh, my friends first were in it, and they told me how fun, how fun it was, so I joined. <laughs> so, and uh, what is your favorite part? <laughs> Um, probably setting up for the dances because we get to plan it all and set it up. So that's really fun to do. You guys do a great job. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And now finally, guys, we're here with Paige Ginling. This is actually the president of student council this year. Paige, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you. Now, I want you to tell me a little bit about your responsibilities here in student council. So this year as student body president, my main responsibility is to listen to the ideas of our members and kind of help them come to life. Um, I oversee a lot of the planning of our events and just make sure that everything goes smoothly. Now, I know you've been in student council for four years, correct? Yes. I used to be part of student council. I had a blast with it, too. But tell me a couple highlights, you know, things you really enjoyed through the last four plus years of being in student council. Um, this is really hard. Um, I would probably say my favorite event is Snowball. Everybody gets so creative right. with the theme, and it's really rewarding to put all that hard work in and then come see the student body and enjoy the evening. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. You're welcome.
I'm here with Mr. Shearing, and I just want to know what made you want to be a sponsor of Student Council? Uh, being a sponsor of Student Council, you get to see a different kind of kids. Uh, like with athletics, you see one kind of group of kids, and then Student Council, you kind of get a broad range of kids, whether it's people that do sports, whether people are in drama, people are in choir. So you kind of get to meet different style of kids that you don't always get to meet. There's definitely a lot to handle. There's a lot of kids in Student Council. We appreciate you guys doing that for us. Um, what is up and coming for Student Council? Uh, we've got two things up and coming. Uh, the one thing that we do every year that we love to do is the Special Olympics with the, uh, with the uh, Northern Kentucky, or actually Lexington branch of Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, they come up here to Perfect North Slopes and we put on a dance for them, we decorate for them. Um, and the other thing that we're looking forward to this year that we haven't done in a while is called Riley Night. Uh, it's Riley Night is a night that we are going to promote for uh, Riley's Children's Hospital. Um, it's a night that kids can come in and there's all kinds of different activities and the biggest thing that we want to do is, is raise money to send to Riley's Children's Hospital. We're definitely all excited to see what's coming up and thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Hey guys, we're here talking with Leah and Alex about Riley Night. So what is Riley Night exactly? So Riley Night is a big fundraising event for Riley Children's Hospital in Indianapolis. Um, we're going to have lots of events there. Um, it's just going to be like a big after prom before a good cause. And when is the event exactly? So the actual event is May 10th from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. But we are going to have a bunch of little fundraising events leading up to it. What kind of activities are you having on Riley Night? So we're going to be having a 3v3 basketball tournament, um, volleyball tournaments, cornhole tournaments, just a bunch of sports where people can get together. Um, we're also going to be having a DJ, a photo booth, and we're going to be making crafts for the kids at Riley Hospital. Awesome. And why exactly are you doing this for Riley's Hospital? You know, what makes them different? Um, we have been both like personally touched and inspired by the stories from the kids at Riley and we like know people like her sister and a bunch of like family friends that actually do it at the college level mm -hmm. and we just want to like pull the school to de pull the school together and do something bigger than ourselves. Awesome. That sounds awesome. Uh, so if there's anybody that still wants to get involved and hasn't yet, uh, what are the opportunities for them? Yeah, definitely. Um, we have a Remind app that you can talk to either one of us about or Mrs. Mrs. Donahue and Mr. Shearing. Um, we meet, just participate in the events, um, the fundraising events leading up to it, and hopefully we see you guys all at the uh, main event. Awesome. Yeah. So May 10th, 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. Hope to see you guys there. We're here with head coach Dave Disbro. Uh, coach Disbro, what would you say is the biggest growth point from last year's team to this year's team? Well, I think um, that in the last two springs and two falls, or actually one fall, that we've put a lot of time in it. Mm -hmm. um, we've done a lot of individual stuff. We've worked really hard in the weight room with both Coach Moore and Coach Belmer. Mm -hmm. And then I think that um, we got a lot done at D1 in Fort Wayne with Coach Hoover. Um, but, you know, we, we had a lot of guys that were young guys last year, even some of them that were juniors that are now seniors, yeah. that got to play a lot of either JV time last year or were playing a lot of varsity time. Mm -hmm. And I just think that that's really helped us. Yeah. When, when you put all of those things together, um, it's probably led to us being 11 and three mm -hmm. and having such a good year right now. Yeah, and that hard work definitely seems to be paying off. It, it, it really has. And, and, you know, we've got a lot of guys that are multi-sport guys. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got some guys that came from the football team and that didn't get all that time in the fall two years ago when they won the state right. championship and then didn't get as much time as some of these other guys mm -hmm. this year. But we had a lot of guys that were in the weight room and mm -hmm. doing individual stuff this fall and last fall that I think just improved us tremendously. Well, that's awesome. So in your mind, who do you think maybe doesn't get the recognition right now on the team that has put in that work and that effort? Well, we've, we've probably played eight or nine, mm -hmm. a lot of varsity minutes this year, probably eight for sure. Yeah. And I hate to say one name because they all work so hard. Right. And you know we've got a lot of guys that do a lot of different things. And then we've got 21 guys on the varsity and JV roster. And, and you're taking those other 12 and 13 that are playing mostly JV mm -hmm. but are helping us so right. much in practice. Scout team stuff. And they're also doing the work to get better individually. But 
you know, I tell Coach Kleckner all the time, I don't know how they lose on the JV level <laughs> because they just kick our brains yeah, in yeah. at practice every night. But, but if you're going to make me go with one guy, uh, we, we took him down to the radio show uh, two weeks ago down at um, Wings and Rings. And, you know, he, he called himself a role player, mm -hmm. and it's Alex Maxwell. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a guy that probably was one of their, their leading scorers coming up, he and Cole Spencer, and Cole's mm -hmm. no longer here. Mm -hmm. And you remember this, too, because right. you were yes, on that exactly, team. Yeah. And, and he's a guy who scored a lot of points for you guys. Mm -hmm. He rebounded it, but that guy was playing in the post all the time. Right, right. What we've asked him to do over the last two years is handle the basketball, mm -hmm. kind of run the show, be the point guard. And then every night when we get done doing our stats after games, he's the guy that's got six rebounds yeah. and six assists. And his assist to turnover ratio is like 64 to 30. It's just, it's unbelievable yeah. what he gets done. No, for sure. And, and he's a guy who, you know, if you watch him play football and, and you watch him run the ball 10, 11, mm -hmm. 12 straight times and he's getting those yards, mm -hmm. He doesn't probably get that recognition on the basketball floor, right. but he's much more than a role player right. for us. Right. Well, uh, good luck in the rest of your season. Thank you. Yeah, thank T you very tough, much. Tough uh, five-game stretch coming up here in the okay. next, like, ten days. So, right. yeah, we appreciate it. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, thank you. I'm here with Jack Driggers, a senior on the boys' basketball team. What's your most memorable game this year? Uh, I would have to say Janes County because it was my first time starting, and it was a good win to start the season, and I dunked. Awesome. I've got a good question for you. Can you throw it down right now? Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, so now we're here with Alex Maxwell, senior captain of the varsity team. Uh, Alex, you also play football, so how do you transition from the physicality of football to the uh, finesse and touch of basketball so quickly? Sure. Um, obviously, it's a quick turnaround from football to basketball every year. Uh, it takes a couple of weeks to kind of get used to, you know, not you're not able to just uh, plop people over in basketball. Right. So um, it's, it definitely takes a while, but uh, after a couple of weeks of practice and a couple of games, you kind of just get used to it. All right. Very cool. Um, and what would you say is your favorite part of the game in general? Um, my favorite part of the game is uh, playing defense. I know it's not uh, it's not very fun to most other people, but I enjoy uh, shutting down my guy uh, day in and day out, and uh, that's probably my favorite part of basketball. All right, man. Well, thank you very much. No problems. Thank you. On this episode of Roaming the Halls, we're just trying to figure out what's behind this door. All right, I'm here with... Corinna Franklin. And uh, <laughs> we're going to figure out what's behind this door. So, Corinna, you've walked past this door so many times in your high school career. Uh, do you have any idea what's behind it? Is it Marcy Moster? Afraid not, but let's see. Other, other way. All right, so we're trying to figure out what's behind this door. I'm here with Dustin. Do you know what's behind the door? No. Why don't you give it a shot? Okay. Keep twisting up all the way. Okay, that's, that's what's behind that door. Okay. All right, thanks, Dustin. Okay. All right, so we're trying to figure out what's behind this door with... Gabby. And? Mallory. And uh, so you guys have walked past this door, like, many times in your high school career. Yes. Yeah. And uh, have you ever seen what's behind it? Um, no, I don't think so. Not that I can remember. All right, well, then uh, let's find out. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And that's what's behind the door. All right, I'm here with my boy here. Ben Munier. 
All right, you. Uh, we're just trying to figure out what's behind this door. So I've seen you walk past this door a lot. What do you think's behind the door? Well, it says custodian, so I'm gonna assume a custodian. Why don't you try to open it? Okay. Oh my. Well, that's what's behind the door. I'm checking my hair. So when we mess up, like I did with minors, so I just what stop, the? restart the question, or just say cut it. Stop, take a breath, restart. Ah, right, that'll do. Ready? <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode three of What's Up BC. My name is Noah Arnold. I'm Mitch Robinson. And today we're going to be talking to some representatives here at Student Council. Um, yeah. Do that again. All right. 